Boyardee bags frozen waffles. What are we talking about? Let's ask Ernie Scheider, Reuters correspondent. All right, Ernie. ConAgra, owner of Chef Boyardee, buying after a very long courtship for $5 billion, Ralcorp Holdings, which does private label brands for supermarkets and such, frozen waffles among them, but many, many products. There's a huge deal. Yes, very, very big deal. The company is paying a 28% premium to Ralcorp's Monday close, so clearly they wanted to get into this space and get into it in a big way. Yeah. And the private label, you can think of it as sort of as like generic offerings out there. And the name of the game is price. Consumers are shopping on price. And ConAgra's CEO admitted as much. He said consumer dynamics have changed since the recession. I mean, duh, like that seems you know to be very, across all industries, that seems to be kind of the main theme. People want to pay less. I'm one of those. At the stop and shop where I go, the private label, it's great, Nature's Promise, I have to say. They're organic mm -hmm. and comes in at a very good price. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating is these brands, the private label business, growing twice as fast as branded products on a dollar basis over the last 13 years. So clearly this is a great space to get into that they've been wanting to for about two years now, ConAgra. Yes, yeah, Ralcor makes cereal, pasta, jams, jellies, and as you say, frozen waffles. And if you're a <laughs> shopper and you've got the Chef Boyardee there or perhaps it's just a generic can of pasta, and if they taste sort of similar, but you know the, fro the generic pasta costs a little bit less, you're probably going to go for that. ConAgra knows that, and so this is basically a big boost to boost their bottom line. Okay, so this makes ConAgra the second largest packaged food company by sales. And this is how much Wall Street likes this deal. Ralcorp up 26% yes. today on the news. That's somewhat to be expected, but shares of ConAgra the buyer up four and a half percent. And that's despite the fact that ConAgra is issuing stock here and diluting the stake of current shareholders. So current shareholders are really, really happy despite their stakes being diluted, you know everyone's happy. And what's more, Treehouse, which is a competitor of mm -hmm. Ralcorp, they're also up. Mm -hmm. Positive all around. And you actually just go jumped off the phone uh, with it, with it, oh, it's sorry. A it's yeah. positive all around for the industry. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the broader markets sure. now and, and take a look and see what uh, U.S. stocks are doing mixed. Okay. Because basically we've got, we had some good news, mm -hmm. mixed despite some good news that came out, consumer sentiment, home data, mm -hmm. um, durable goods. Positive case, Shirley, as you say, with the housing. So right. it's still, still a mix, despite all the positive news, not as strong as it could be. Right. Second ballot we know is coming for Greece, and we know Obama's out there kind of drumming up uh, his plans for the fiscal cliff. He's visiting small businesses. Mm -hmm. He's talking with middle class families, saying, you know, I want to protect, not have your taxes go up. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I mean, what's interesting to me is President Obama is out there actively selling his plan. And, you know, this just shows sort of how far we are from a negotiation, a final deal, a solution, will you, on, uh, if you will, on the fiscal cliff, yep. if he feels the need to go out there and keep selling it. So we're still a long ways to go. And I think you see that reflected in equities. Okay. We're going to move and we're going to talk about dividends. And this <laughs> is where I got so excited and jumped the gun a little bit because <laughs> I do know that you just got off an executive uh, with uh, talking about dividends. But on the heels of Walmart, uh, moving up its dividend, talking about this fiscal cliff, to possibly save some big taxes that would have to be shelled out mm -hmm. uh, for dividends. Uh, Las Vegas Sands also issuing a, a special dividend, $2.75 payable December 18th. And Las Vegas Sands uh, shares up 5% today. Really positive news for them. Um, the company only pays about a 25 cent quarterly dividend now, so $2.75 is a huge payout. Um, Las Vegas Sands CEO and chairman is Sheldon Adelson, very outspoken um, supporter of Mitt Romney during the presidential campaign. Um, so he's been very, very outspoken on U.S. tax and regulatory policy as well. Right. So in some regards, this is not a total surprise that he's out there doing this. We're going to take a look at some other companies that have also moved up. They're paying out a special dividend. Brown Foreman, Jack Daniels, Southern Comfort, thumbs yes. up from Ernie, Dillard Department Stores, and as we mentioned, Walmart earlier. Mm -hmm. And we also see some executives um, making moves as well with, for their personal accounts. You know, Airgas Chairman and founder Peter McCausland last night sold about 1.2 million shares in the company, uh, netting about $180 million. And I just got off the phone with the company, and they admitted, yes, tax implications were part of our chairman's decision. Right. So it's, it's all around. It's all around. Okay, let's move to the hot spot, Ernie, as we do. Remember, check out the snaps at the bottom of your screen for more headlines. Green Mountain Coffee, we've talked a lot about them. Earnings mm -hmm. expected uh, out after the bell today. Stormont expects EPS, 48 cents a share, one cent above the mean. Of course, they have the K-Cup business. Mm -hmm. that they moved into, patents expired, Starbucks, Walmart, everybody competing there. New CEO, maybe we'll get a glimpse into what his plans are. Brian Kelly coming over from Coke. Yes. Investors are definitely nervous about where the company is going, but it's still got broad market appeal. And mm -hmm. so I think investors are willing to say, okay, where is this going long term? But in the short term, you know, there's a lot of kind of negative 
uh, vibes around the company. Short interest around 25, 26%. That's huge. Basically, a lot of people yeah. betting the stock's going to fall. Um, when you look at sort of the options right now, the options are betting for a big dip in the equity after the market close. Um, the stock does trade very, very volatile, volat you know, just trade a lot. And so after this past seven or eight earnings periods, it has jumped, you know, double digits um, or fallen double digits after results. So, you know, I think a lot of investors are saying, okay, Brian Kelly, a new leadership team coming in. Let's see where it goes, but we're going to have a few rough patches in the interim. All right, interesting. Let's move on and talk about Solar City because mm -hmm. they've got an IPO they've announced coming up. Now, we've talked a lot about solar panels, the manufacturers in China, mm -hmm. oversupply there, surplus, and that's driven the prices down. These guys are the installers, so they've benefited from those low prices. Yeah, if you were in the solar business, it behooves you to be in the installation and not the <laughs> manufacturing space yeah. because solar is more popular now than it ever has been. People want more solar. If you're a utility, you want huge solar farms to produce electricity. And these are the PV panels that go on the roof for electricity. Yes. As opposed to say hot water, but yeah, specifically right, the PV. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's the place to be. Manufacturing, you know, the pricing to go into these, it's it's gone way, way down. Yeah. And so basically there's just, you know, you can't make money in making them anymore, but you can make money in installing them. So Solar City pricing in the $13 to $15 range, you know, Wall Street you know, despite some of the past problems in the solar industry, still thinking that there's a future here. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. All right, Ernie Scheider, thanks so much. Remember, everybody, follow us on t Twitter at Reuters Insider and check out our YouTube channel, Reuters.com slash Reuters TV. I'm Lisa Bernhard. This is Reuters.